guys, what's going on? Maggie from MNR here. Today we are in Reno, Nevada, visiting our friends over at Fuel. Let's go. Five thousand orders coming in. Hold on, please. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm Maggie from m and I'm here to run your shop today. Wow. <laughs> uh, nice, <laughs> nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Dustin, you are the owner here at Fuel in Reno. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started? How long you've been in business for? So Never back before. in back in 2005, 2006. Uh, my partner and I, Jay, we came together. I was at a small shop, like trading some, uh, like office space and stuff for some of his screen printing that he was doing at the time. And that company was like kind of going out of business. And so we came together with the idea of like just starting kind of our own little thing. And Your little baby. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was like we had actually that's our original chameleon over there. A um, little six color chameleon, we had a little fusion dryer, and we had like this one little like 1200 foot section of this shop downtown, just like right across the street from here. And uh, you know, over the course of just kind of doing your own thing and trying to make that happen, right? Like doing some clothing brand stuff, start doing like some, you know, work for friends and all that kind of stuff, paying the overhead. And then all of a sudden it just kind of, over the years it just morphed and morphed into like, oh, we I'm just actually good at this. <laughs> yeah, like we just grew. I mean, I when I was in college, I put myself through college screen printing in the Bay Area, and uh, I went to I screen printed in high school, so we kind of knew what we were doing going into it. And uh, but building it, building it to this size was, you know, something that we just never really, we never thought of. Oh, so yeah. it's it's morphed over you know, 15, 16, 16 years, years. Yeah. And look at you guys now. Yep. <laughs> this is? I'm Carter, screen technician over at Fuel Promotions. Yeah. Carter, how has pre-press automation helped fuel? Fuel. <laughs> well, mainly the lack of film is mm -hmm. the main thing. A huge time spent developing, stripping every step that goes with the film process. This has cut it in half, yeah. hugely. Way better. <laughs> Way better, and cleaner much cleaner prints, screens look much tighter, everything is much, much faster and better. What's been the return on your investments here at Fuel? On the digital side, for us adding the SEs, uh, like Carter was saying earlier, uh, reducing film costs, stripping costs, and all that kind of stuff, it seems like those costs are small when you think about buying a machine like this, but once you get the machine, you realize the quality of work, right? and the ease of what's coming out um, was exponential for us. We, I would imagine it only took us about three months to, real, to fully realize uh, how much time we were wasting mm -hmm. um, making screens with film, stripping them, the amount of plastic waste. I mean, go into all of that, right? The amount of plastic you just throw away every year in film. Um, to the point where we were like, when we thought we couldn't keep up anymore, we got another SD, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so we run both of these all day long while we're coding. So the efficiency of it, you know, used to come in, I used to call it passive work, right? Where you would hand code all your screens in the morning for like two, three, four hours, right? And while they're drying, you know, you're like getting ready for the next day and then you're doing other work, stripping and all that kind of stuff. Now, these guys are doing it all in like one loop, one room. You know, they're making screens all day long while they're coding. And then by the time they leave, all of these racks in here are full for the next day. Mm -hmm. And when they come back, all the, all the racks out there are ready to come in and coat. So I have one operator and someone, you know, cleaning out screens and washing screens, um, but basically two people cycling through anywhere between 150 and 300, 300 screens in maybe six to eight hours. Yeah, it's all about that. That's a lot, yeah. yeah. And so when you see that amount of, those amount of screens come out, um, it became, it, it's amazing 
the, the only problem that we had was keeping them all organized because there were so much, so many screens coming out to the floor. Um, we had to figure out a way to keep them organized <laughs> from job to job and where we kept them organized and how we, how we came up with a system for that. But it's pretty amazing uh, to have that many amount or that amount of screens to where you have a problem keeping them organized. So tell me about this big bad boy. Oh, I almost broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can break it. It was welded in England. It took a long yeah, time a long, to get these. Long time, long time yep. to get these cabinets. Um, so this is our, for us, this was our newest investment from m and And uh, we love this thing. So we went from, you know, washing screens every day. And we had, the year before, we had just put in a brand new Cobra. So we were on the Sportsman and the Cobra. And it came time to think about, like, I really wanted another Cobra, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to move the Sportsman. I wanted to put a 16-color Cobra in. But this room, on a daily basis, probably had maybe four or 500 screens, would you say, Joey? Yeah, maybe four or 500 screens that these guys just never could get to, right? And so thinking about infrastructure-wise, if we couldn't keep up washing screens with two on two presses, how are we gonna keep up three, with yeah. three, right? So we looked at it. I talked to a bunch of people, talked to our service tech, who we have a good relationship with. And then I started talking to Nicole, and she's like, invest in infrastructure, invest in infrastructure. You don't see the, you don't see the dollars coming off the press, right? But just trust me, just trust me, invest in this infrastructure. And so it took a long time. It was during the pandemic yeah. when we ordered it. Um, and we had a couple uh, delays, uh, but once we got it in, I, I couldn't be happier with it. This thing, it took a job in which these guys were, you know, spraying chemicals. And I mean, we tried to make it as efficient as possible, but it's just dirty, right? It, it is was a dirty job. La very labor intensive, scrubbing, stripping ink off, stripping emulsion into a job that's, you know, I mean, you're still stripping the tape and, you know, scraping the ink off, but really at the end of the day, we're running it through the machine. They're managing the chemistry of the machine and then they're rinsing them off. And the amount of screens that they get done in just a given day is more, unbelievable. Yeah. And then that coupled at the same time we bought the Unicoat um, to be able to manage our, you know, emulsion thickness. The two things we realized is that by managing our emulsion thickness, we could actually know exactly how much emulsion we needed every month. And it's pretty dialed down. And even when we have very, very busy months, we might be ordering maybe once or two, one to two more times a month, you know, thinking like, oh, we're getting a little short on it. But most of the time it's super dialed and we have plenty of materials and chemicals yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So this is probably my favorite investment that we've made by by I'm far sure with them and, <laughs> and and I know the guys in the screen room. Not, yeah. They love it so much more than standing at the sink. This is this is by far one of my one of the best investments we uh, from M and R, and I love it. What is your typical run size today? Uh, we don't really have a typical run size. So the way we built the business and with the customer base that we have, um, our customer base is a lot of online companies. And so their demands when we're doing individual shipping and fulfillment, obviously, you know, if a customer is missing a piece because the post office lost it or UPS lost it, um, we still fulfill it. So you see the manuals over there. And so we might do larger runs over here and then the customer might, might get a hold of the company and say, hey, you know, so-and-so is missing, you know, one or two pieces and we'll fulfill that piece. It's not my favorite thing to do, but we do fulfill it. Yeah. Uh, for the, you know, the most of our, most of our stuff is anywhere between, I would say 80 to six or 700 pieces. That's kind of a, a general day, especially over here. Um, this is our original auto. Uh, yeah, we bought it. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, this is a 10, 12 Sportsman that we bought in 2008. She's um, a beaut. Yeah, she's got about 5 million impressions on her. Um, still running strong. Uh, we have a pretty hardcore maintenance program though with it. Mm -hmm. um, we change out, we have two full toolboxes, one for each press of uh, yellow cords, plungers, valves, SMC valves. Over the years, um, the amount of times 
the press has gone down, our dryers have gone down, uh, we service most of our equipment in-house. Um, and we have most all parts to, to kind of service them. You know, MNR has always been great about calling. And if they can't get a tech out on the phone, uh, I, I've spent a lot of Saturdays on the phone yeah. with someone uh, in Chicago and, you know, uh, jumping breakers and that kind of stuff, trying to figure things out. And uh, over the years, that's really taught us uh, how to yeah. how to service how to service these, own, yeah. this equipment on our own. We really take the time when I do get Cameron out here or I do get a tech out here. Uh, we really try to take the time uh, to go over all the procedures that we might need whether it's broken belts or you know how do we fix our own better to over yeah, how, how do we fix our own equipment and you know MNR has always been so great for getting parts out to us Saturday deliveries all that kind of stuff uh, so the parts department has always been really good uh, they better as well <laughs> they're kidding. great they're they're really really good um, and yeah so that's our that's that uh, we added a Cobra over two years ago um, 14 16 I love that machine. Mm -hmm. um, Cobras are a hit it, now. It's amazing. That machine is so quiet. Um, when we first started running it, I was sitting in my office and I just didn't think anyone was printing. Because I didn't I didn't hear the <laughs> chopper cylinders, right? And I'm like, what is everyone doing? Why aren't they printing? Why, why aren't the presses moving? And I looked down and you know they're printing a 10 color job and I was like, oh wow, it's so quiet. So that that's gonna be our next step. Is uh, we're gonna Another one? Yeah, we're gonna move we're gonna move the sportsman and this older sprint two thousand um, and some manuals into another area of the shop in our next expansion. Put a sixteen color cobra on the floor and move that one over here with a new three that's your so, future plans that's so our, far? yeah a nice split belt 3000 and then have two cobras over here that's my that's our future plan nice. so hopefully we're looking at maybe february next year oh, so, yeah yeah high five yeah. <laughs> so okay all right you gotta go no well <laughs> I guess Back my work, work here is done. You got the official Blue Crew squeegee. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. <laughs> 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 it's been fun for real though. Oh.